Ed, good morning from a very, very stormy North Florida. You're going to hear some thunder here in the background, I'm sure. So if we drop, well, then we'll just have to pick it back up from our log file or something. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Doing well. How are you? Just fine. Uh, we've had a week to ruminate. And uh, I want to welcome everybody back now to our official session two. And I also want to uh, thank everybody because, once again, you have set the bar higher and higher. And our session one release this past week is the best numbers I've ever seen on YouTube. So clearly, uh, in one week, we've had over 400 views, which is very unusual for this little channel of oh mine so thank you very much to everybody who's tuned in with that's great cool. interest oh this is uh, I, I think this is going to be a, something that's going to catch a lot of attention i hope and maybe it's just because of its coincidental timing with the release of the the actual on to richmond physical copies don't know but there is interest out there and people are uh, tuning in so thank you very much for that yeah i think i think it did get a lot of interest it's a very interesting title Sadly, I've made some mistakes already, but we'll no, we'll get to that at some point. But yeah, it's this is really interesting campaign. It's it's there's a lot to digest. I would have already played the first four turns very differently, just having learned a little bit. We've we've done so. I'm looking forward to continuing this campaign. Each week, I know I'm going to be doing this, but Saturday night I was kind of looking at the map and doing exactly what you said. I was like, well, what could I have done differently? If the circumstances were different, what do I need to do for the first strategic turn, which we're all going to experience together? I think it's going to be a lot easier than we expect because much of that stuff is already spoken for in this particular one. But those early choices, and we are, let's address the first thing, uh, talking about the what I did not do last week, which we're going to continue to do, is previous campaign games. We have established that right before we break for the end of the day, we will roll the mm. random event so that at least Roger and I have a week to think about how are we going to get our arms around about that 800-pound gorilla. So, uh, yeah, this one we're coming in like fresh, just like the first time we played. We have no idea what's in store for us today. So mentally, we are both ill-prepared for anything beyond what our hearts desire, right? Yeah. I thought about that Sunday night. I oh, we didn't roll for random events. I know we didn't talk about it either. So I thought, well, that's okay. And immediately, people are commenting on it. You didn't roll for the random events. That's right. Exactly. So <laughs> that's the kind of feedback that you're like, oh, that's right. You know, you think we've done this a time or two. So thank you very much for that feedback. And then, of course, the other Big one. Let's transition right into our corrections segment. As always, thank you everybody who made comments on this, pointed this out. Roger, do you want to take this one since it, it involves mostly you? Yeah, there's a, a new option for the campaign game called Strategic Movement. And the rule very clearly states eight hexes with the exception of all water hex. Of course, I read that we had rain and I'm thinking unfordable river hey i was as guilty as I you do it. that's right <laughs> absolutely i i totally looked at it and went oh that's what they mean and then when i went back and read it as well i saw there's emphasis on that any it's in italics even so i was like oh yeah. they really mean it unless but the the small instances where that would be the case is way down the york way down the james way down the potomac i mean we have so few all water hexes on these maps that i just yeah i mean why would they even bother but clearly there's a reason for it so we will play it as written of course yeah so i uh, my thought and is i would have moved i would have made two activations i would not have pushed to p3 is i'll roll two dice add it up and subtract from the 14 in a rain turn and move the third core back okay that number of that that number okay that, that seems like, a, you know, I was trying to figure out how we were going to do it, and then at the point where Longstreet was already up to here, I don't think he was, I I don't even think I was at the river at that point, so I don't yeah, think the first core was affected at all. Yeah, I checked that and counted and uh, went through my log file and was like, okay, that one was okay, but that hill, hill could not have moved. So I'll uh, roll two dice, first roll, there we go. Another six, and I'm good. Ah! All right, you need no to change. not do that. 
Yeah, so he had gotten. Uh, he could have gone. So sixteen divided. Yeah, so he could have gone eight total hexes right in the rain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that. But I think he gets to the same, same spot. Yeah, I, I think, I, I beat my head against like, how are we going to adjust this? I don't really think it matters. I was almost ready to say, you know what, it's, it's fine. So the dice have told us that it's fine. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, that's. I probably got my sixes for movement out of the way for the day, too. Boy, I hope so. <laughs> All right. Well, this one, is, again, we're glad to have everybody back. This one, we're going to have lots of interesting little tidbits as we go through. So I'm pulling up the sequence of events here. We are going to have our first, at the end of the, uh, after the recovery phase of the action cycle, we will have our first strategic cycle here in turn four. We're going to go through step by step in the strategic cycle. As I mentioned, it's probably not going to be very much for this first one, just because a lot of things are preset at the beginning yeah. of the game, and those situations have not come into effect yet. So I'm not even I'm not concerned about it. But it is a good chance for us to explain to you, gentle viewers, how these things are going to work, like supply and uh, leadership and you know if they fall ill and all that good stuff so anything else i don't think we missed anything else that was pretty much it uh those two things so corrections phase is done for us and we move forward so what do we think about this turn now that the the rain has parted uh i have updated the maybe yeah that's true <laughs> you, you, you put it out there we in, don't know yet you put it out there in the universe uh i did update the the unfordable rivers so even though the rain has stopped the uh rapidan is still unfordable because it is a, uh, a okay. minor river and then the major rivers are still unfordable today and tomorrow so there's no crops crossing the rappahannock on any of those except at the Fredericksburg Bridge. So there's no way to get over into that county unless I go by bridge. These two little pontoon bridges, oh mine, are vitally important to everything I'm doing right now to get everybody across if I wish. But sadly, that means that Warren and the Fifth Corps, eh, they're still cooling their heels on the plains outside of Rapidan Station for now. I did go through, and uh, as we'll see in the off-map theater, I did add the fact that the USA is currently passive by scenario setup in both the Valley and the Bermuda Hundred, so we'll address that when it comes up in the strategic phase. Hey everyone, Patrick here. Just a quick interruption to the regularly scheduled game. This is done so that we can prevent you all from furiously starting to type about my incorrect information of what I just said there. I misread the Bermuda 100 status as being passive. In actuality, the text is they begin active in game scenario number 9 and passive in scenario 10. I read it as both the Valley and Bermuda 100 start as passive. So that is going to influence a lot of my decisions for this turn. So we're just going to roll with it. It doesn't matter too much to me, but I just wanted to let you know before it gets too far afield. I now return you to your regularly scheduled video. Let me check the Bermuda 100. I think you're not passive in that. I, the off map is still a black box to me that I don't understand. Well, let's talk about that for a second because we have in the uh, in the sequence of play, you have and we've already had potentially one day yesterday on turn two that we or turn oh, three we right. could have done it. Um, the off map phase simply says that that you can do transfers to and from the off map. All right, so I think they could make that little a little clearer on the chart there. But for the off map movement, that just means hey, uh, for example, if you are at a railroad station and you want to transfer somebody over to the valley then you can put them into their transit boxes for that and it will tell you uh, going from this map to the off map it just depends on where they're coming from where they're going to and then they will appear that many turns forward onto the transit boxes for those areas so that's that's how you move things and vice versa so it's reciprocal so if I wanted to take some of old Benjamin Butler here if he was in a place that he could let's say he was at Drury's Bluff, and I wanted to bring him onto the main map, then I could transfer stuff from 
Bermuda 100 over a period of three or four days, and then they will get those units onto the actual main map. So that requires a little bit of planning ahead, which, as you said, uh, you, you and I are both like, whatever. <laughs> that seems so unimportant to us right now because those are those are different worlds. But when we get to the strategic cycle and things start happening to those particular uh, units and leaders in those off-map areas, well, they may need, may need some help, and I may have to siphon some units off of the map here. If I'm doing really well on the main map, I send somebody to the valley to help poor Seagull out. You just, you never can tell. Um, yeah, that, so, yeah, that's what triggered my question on Facebook about the, the Hollywood Cemetery hex under Barton, if that was, why that wasn't an eligible hex. And Oh, yeah, exactly, right. Yeah, um, and then Chris Withers said, "Well, it should be." <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> it's a real word. Really help, yeah. Chris, <laughs> yeah. um, because I was looking at because not really knowing how the off map works, I was I looked at that stack under Butler and went 11, 13, 12, 12. <laughs> How many guys does Pickett have? Yeah, you can see by the actual um, markers that Alberto has put on this very nice chart. So if I wanted to say Siegel, Siegel's coming in from West Virginia, I'd have to put him five turns ahead yeah. on on the time marker before he could even arrive somewhere on the north edge of my map at one of the designated locations. And then you could see that the, some of the rail movement that you could send from, from Richmond to help out at Drury's Bluff, uh, or Port Walthall, whatever. So that does take time. I love that it simulates the temporal nature of that. Uh, or yeah. if they're just marching, you know, on the roads. Will that be important? Have no idea. We just we'll we'll get about turn sixteen and go. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I need guys. That... Well, there's, there's you got points that you can get on that off map. Right. right, and and well, there's also the difference. So that's that's this part where you're moving stuff to and from the main map, and then during the strategic cycle, as we'll see in this one, is that's where we will have two individual phases for each of those, where you and I yep. can both do operations with the units that are on those, and it's a little sub game that that is involved. So Butler may want to march to you know X Y Z, or may want to attack some unit that's on the map uh the problem is the union must have command points and as it stands right now we're both passive and zero command points so right yeah. so i will be supposedly earning those depending on how things shake out with the strategic events but much remains to be seen about mm -hmm. those boxes yeah that'll be interesting oh yeah um, but that's, I think that's all there is to it. Uh, as we ended out last time with our discussion, I, the se the worst kept secret in the world is, uh, you know, I'm trying to get that first domino at Spotsylvania Courthouse. Uh, it does not affect anything for me other than the fact that county control would give me the ability to do strategic movement through Spotsylvania because of that. Supply-wise, as we're going to see, that Culpepper right now exerts by reciprocity and adjacency into Spotsylvania. So uh, my Culpepper Depot is doing perfect work getting those uh, chow wagons down the Germana Plank Road. So I should be pretty good for supply this turn, and as will you. So I think that supply segment's going to go pretty yeah, quick. that's going to go fast, yeah. yeah. Yeah, after I went through the rules, I realized, okay, there isn't anything like I was looking, well, should I be trying to block? Uh, no, it's just you just have to be adjacent. If I destroy your bridges, it wouldn't make a difference. Right. Yeah, I think the yeah. the abstraction of the adjacency by counties is very helpful, I think, this far. Because it lets you focus on some of the other logistical issues, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, that's why there's no wagons, people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw someone coming. There's no wagon. Is that a mistake? No, there's just no wagons. There's just a lot of wagons, and they exist on all the roads and fords everywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're ready to, to get underway. What do you say? Yeah, let's get this party started. Okay, well then, uh, I think since you gave us the rain last time with that first random event roll, I think, and you've already rolled your sixes, so <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna roll and see what our random event is for today. Because yeah, th those two sixes would have given us rain current plus one, and I don't need that again. So here is our first random event for the day. It's a four. No four effect. Is Hooray. Our star convert to rain current from June 1st to June 12th. Yep. Excellent. Nothing. All right. So I'm just dealing with the, the rain runoff into the, the major, major and minor rivers. Um, 
but that's okay. I can deal with that. Um, and it's it's unfordable. Um, this is a question I always have. So you're looking at the chart on the back of the rule book. Right. And we had a rain current plus one. So the all others, so it went unfordable for the day of rain, unfordable for the next day of rain. And then you take it one more past that. And then, and then majors is two more. Mid two more past that. Right. Okay. Yep. That table, I don't know why, it's just... Well, it's hard because the, the rain plus one and all that, you're like, oh, is it from the moment that I roll it? But no, it's right. it's, it's already unfordable during the rain turns because it's raining. Um, so it's always whatever the last day of rain is, then it's that many more beyond that last day. Plus one. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I just... Can't keep it in my head. Uh, I'm the same way. I looked at that. I was like, wait a minute. I'm a graphics guy. I understand this. No, I don't. Leader transfer time, then. Uh, I do have a leader transfer. I'm going to move Grant and Hancock over to Mott. Sheridan will stay where he is. Sedgwick, of course, will stay where he is. And everybody else, I think, is good. I think that's good. So do you have any? Okay, let's see. I'm going to move you all. He's going to go to Ram Sewer. I'm going to take Lee and AP Hill. I'm going to move them to Heath. And Stewart will stay where he is. Longstreet will stay where he is. Anybody else? I think that's it. I think uh, that's it for me. Okay, perfect. Then we have the off-map phase. So now, if we want, in either order, we can transfer units back and forth between these off-maps. So I'm going to take a quick look here and see if there's anybody that I think that I need. Um, Siegel seems like he's doing okay against Imbedin, but we don't know. So I'm really, no harm, no foul. They're just sitting cool and pretty out there so I'm just not going to do any transfers to or from would you like to do any uh, I'm going to play the rule as in the book so Barton couldn't do a rail transfer to anywhere because he's not in the right spot which okay. is fine Okay. and I don't think I want to try to move anybody at this point. I'm just going to let the off map be what it is. And... Yeah, I think you and I just need to wait and see what happens when we pull those levers and go, oh, yeah. oh, that's what's going to happen. Okay. Yeah. So next time we play it, we'll know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Day one, Siegel becomes a super genius. Um, exactly. Right. Yeah. Or I see. I, I just see. I just see Butler just. You know, when I looked at that a little more carefully, I just see him, like, moving box to box to box, and suddenly I have a huge army in Richmond, and it's like, okay, game over. <laughs> I, I, I kind of wonder about that myself. If he has enough command points, could he do that, right? All right, yeah. next phase is our county control phase, and um, nothing has changed, so I have not yeah. quite occupied anything, so that is standard uh, attachments so you may attach units if you uh, have now I one thing that we I have anybody. we didn't talk about on this one and this is there's a nice little note there that uh, that any unit can attach to any other unit so suffice that it does not make it too large for a division um, whatever that limit is for this title uh, Balcat is going crazy out there, so I apologize if you hear her yelling back there. Um, nope. But yeah, I don't, I don't know that I have any attachments that I need or want to do. Um, Kitching is is cool, is taking care of business with the depot, so he's going to be fine there. What about you? I don't have any to make. All right. Oh, I'm good. Okay. Then we will move on to our action cycle, our first one of the day. So I will let you take the first initiative on this one. And as always, good luck. Yep, good luck to you. So this will be Union left, Confederate right for initiative. And Union. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. What do I need to do today? The roads are clear. So I think we need to... Get the entirety of the second corps marching. So we'll do that. They will get a fatigue. Here is their movement of plus one. Six. Mm. That's great. We can achieve our first goal. 
So I'll have bar logo one, two, three, four, five. Bernie will go one, two, three, four, five, and six. Have, uh, Hancock and Mott go one, two, three, four, five, and six. And Gibbon will go one, two, three, four, five, and to there. All right. Initiative. It's yours. Well, we're going to pull back from the Rapidan. Because I think that's done. Uh, so we'll take you. We'll activate sub one, ramp sewer, and stew it. One die plus two. There's my one. Uh, so that's a three. Eul's going to transfer to Stuart. So one will go first. One, two, three. Ram Sir. One, two, three. I'm going to force march Stuart. I hate doing this, but I've got to get south here. So here's his force march. He's going to lose a single manpower, but now he can go seven hexes. It's going to go one, two, three, four, five. Um, so he's not going to be able to get into the wood hex. Initiative. It's mine again. Okay, Yule's going to activate Stewart again. And E. Johnson, Burley, and Rhodes. Here's their movement. They can go five hexes. Ewell is going to transfer to E. Johnson. Rhodes will go first. One, two, three, four to there. Burnley will go next. One, two, three, four, five. E. Johnson. Three, four. Stewart will go one, two, Three, four, five to there. Initiative, yours. Gonna have Sedgwick activate the sixth core. And here's their movement, plus one. Four. He will Transfer up to Getty. Markets will go first. We'll go one, two, three, and four. Sedgwick will go one, two, three, and four. And Wright will go one, two, three, and four. Initiative. Yours. Trying to decide whether I want to try the activate army leader. I'm not going to do that. I'll have you will activate E. Johnson, Early Rhodes, and Stewart. So Stewart will need an extend march. Here's their movement. Go five hexes. Stewart will go first. Here's his extend march. He's okay. He's going to go. One, two, three, four there. Roads. One, two, three, four, five. Early one, three, four, five. Finally, Yule with Johnson. One, three, four. To there. Initiative. Yours. I will activate the six core again. Here's their movement plus one. Five. Sedgwick once again will transfer to the hapless rickets. <laughs> and we're gonna get to go five. 
one, two, three, four, and five. Getty will go one, two, three, four, and five. And right, we'll go one, two, three to there. Yep. All right, initiative. Yours. I think I will try to do the activate army leader with Lee. I need four more, it fails. Three or less, it succeeds. So here's the attempt. It's a three, which is that success. It is. We'll take sub one, Ram Sewer, Heath. I'm not doing Stuart, so he's not moving. Everybody but Stuart who is within range. Here's the die roll as plus two. Yep, as per usual. That's helpful, Mr. Lee. Very helpful, General Lee. He's a cautious general. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I needed one more pip. Do what I wanted to do at a minimum. Well, crud. Lee and Hill will stay with Heath. Anderson will go one, two, three. Wilcox, one, two, three. They're going to go one, two. I'm going to leave them there. One, two, three. What I'm sure. One, two, three. Initiative. Mine again. Take sub one. Now I get a six. Then in March. He's going to do a mid-move there. That's all that was about. Initiative. Yours. I'll have Torbert activate the first calf. Here's their movement. Plus one. Five. One, two, three, four, and five. Initiative. Mine again. I'll have... Sheridan activate the second calf. Here's their movement, plus two. Ten. I'll have DM Greg go first. I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sheridan will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Initiative, yours. F we like to make Lomax and Wickham. And they are going to do what? If I try to move, moving into Hex, the Woods Hex, that would be Zock to restricted Zock. Do they still flip? They do not flip. Yep, you'll be fine. They would not flip. Okay, now let's do that. Here's movement is 11. Okay. So moving into a woods hex is going to cost them six plus one, I six, think. Six, yep. seven. It could go to four, one, one, six then from there, which would be another three. Well, go to three, which would be ten. So they'll do that. And stop. Initiative. Mine. We'll take these two guys again. We'll max and wick them. So now they can go five. This will be four to there. Five to there. Initiative. Yours. Yeah, we'll activate. Both of those units with Sheridan again. Uh, here's movement plus two. It's an eight total. Oh, Davies go first. He has an extended march. He's okay. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to there. Sheridan will go 
one, two to there. Initiative. Mine again. Hmm. I will have Torbert march. Take him to two. Here's movement plus one. Eight. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to there. Initiative, yours. We will take Glomax and wick him to T3. Here's their movement. <laughs> they are consistent. <laughs> uh, so that's five? Yeah. Um, F. Lee will go with Wickham, who will go first. Here's his extend march. He's going to be okay. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. He'll stop at Guinea Station. And F. Lee went with him. Uh, now Lomax. He's okay. He's just going to stack on top of him. Initiative. Mine. Stuart will activate Rosser. And under WH Lee, Chambliss. Here's their movement. They can go 11 hexes. One. W H Lee one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven to Union Church. Initiative yours. I'll activate Burnside and the Ninth Corps. Here they come. Walk down the street. Get funny as looks from uh, movement plus one. Five. Okay. So send the artillery down first. One, two, three, four, five. And Burnside will go one, two, three, four, five. Potter, one, two, three, four, five. Provisional. One, two, three, four. Stevenson, one, two, three, four. And Ferraro, one, two, three, four, five. All right. Initiative. Yours. Longstreet will activate Field and Kershaw. Here's their movement. Four. Longstreet will stay with Field. We'll go first. One, two, three, four. Kershaw. Two, three. Initiative. Yours again. Okay, we'll take Burnside and the ninth again. Movement plus one. Four. Potter will go one, two, three, four. Burnside and the artillery, one, two, three, four. Stevenson, one, two, three, four. Uh, Ferrero, one, two, three, and four. And provisional, one, two, and three. Initiative, mine again. Take the 13th Pennsylvania Cavalry. Movement. Wow. Go Pennsylvania. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Hello and welcome. Should have moved here a long time ago. <laughs> Initiative. Uh, let's move the second Ohio. Movement. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven.
Hmm. Initiative. Yours. Now's your chance. First North Carolina. Movement. Seven. So where is he going? He's going up or down. He goes there, he's done. Well, heck, let's just have us a battle. <laughs> Lash out! Use the... <laughs> The dark side of the falls. Let's just have a battle. Why not? First North Carolina will attack 13th Pennsylvania, and this is just going to be a straight-up die roll. Yeah. No artillery, no flank, yeah. no... No nothing. It's, it's, Here we go. It's just foreheads, pushing each other's foreheads, going, take a swing, take a swing! Here's the attack roll. It's a five. Here's the defense roll. There's a six. Oh! Negative one. That's a D for me. Sure, it's an F for me. All right, negative one. Yeah, big F. So four. Flips demoralized. He's probably gonna die. I suppose the smart play probably would have been to do a force march, which probably would have killed him, and not cost me any victory points. But what's the fun in that? The initiative. Mine again. I forgot what I was trying to do. Oh, Longstreet will take Field and Kershaw to T2. Here's their movement. Five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Initiative. Mine again. Take Ramsur to T2. Three. Here's his movement. Three. Extended march. He's okay. He needed one more pip. Just can't do what I want to do today. One, two to there. Initiative. Mine. Stuart will take roster to fatigue or two. They can go seven plus three for Stuart. Ten. And that's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten to there. Initiative. Mine again. W.H. Lee will take Chambliss to fatigue two. Five plus two, seven. One, two to there. Three, four, five, six, seven. Initiative, yours. Guess we'll take the 22nd New York. It's movement. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Initiative, yours. Take Hampton, we'll activate, he can only activate Young. Nine, they can go eleven hexes. One, two, three, four, five. Six and seven to there. Initiative, yours. Uh, Sheridan will activate both units in range again. To fatigue three. Here's their movement. Plus two. It's Eleven. Davies will go first. Extended march. It's plus one now. He flips. He'll go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten to there. Sheridan will take the opportunity to go. One, two, three. So we'll do what we like to do. Is keep him in a box.
Of course, you are welcome to exit down the Guinea Bridge at any time. So, initiative, yours. I'm going to take Lomax to fatigue four, and he's going to damage that railroad station. I think this was something I should have been doing during the rain turns, is burning all those railroad stations with Lee. That's, that should have been his job. Fredericksburg, Hamilton's Crossing, and Guinea Station. That's what they should have been doing the last two days. Bloody scorched earth policy. Yeah. I think that creates a little trouble for you <laughs> longer <laughs> in the game. <laughs> I mean, very, very little <laughs> when it comes to building depots. I mean, basically, if you're building depots at that point, it's game over anyway, probably. Uh, your initiative. Okay. Second Ohio march. Just move it. Six. Through the woods. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Initiative. Mine again. Do third New Jersey. Movement. Six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Initiative. Yours. Warren is still stuck at the forge, right? Yep. Gordon by himself. He can go five hexes. Uh, he can go oh, six. six. Yeah, he gets plus one. He can go one, two, one, two, four, five. Man. Just one pip short on everything today. Well, let's do something different then if he's going to be that slow. He belongs to WL. One, two, three, four, five, six to there. Initiative. Mine again. Take Gordon for T2. It's a little better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight to there. Initiative. Wide again. Take Hampton under Young to fatigue two. He's going to build Abatis. Initiative. Yours. Going to have Mott march to two under Grant and Hancock. Here's movement. Six. I'll just go one, two, to there. Initiative. Oh, possible end of turn. I, let me look around, see if there's anything else that is pressing for me to do. I'm going to let it go. Would you like to try to continue it? I'm going to let it go as well. All right. We'll have our... Probably going to pass if I won the net, so I... Yeah, yeah, sure. Let the, let the fates determine the end of the day. So the sun has gone down. I will do a sunshine. Well, let's take it in order. Let's make sure we got everything. Okay, so yes, recovery phase first. So I'll do the sunshine recovery. Finally, the sun is back out. Everybody is recovering. Fantastic. Wilson is digging in. All right, during the recovery phase, I have the opportunity to try to build a pontoon bridge with... Uh, Robinson and Crawford. Open up my HQ here, and I've got minor bridges available to me. Uh, I believe for each one that tries it, they have to be at fatigue level zero. There has to be no enemy on the other side, which is nice. And I get some modifiers for fordability. It's currently plus one if the river is unfordable. Okay, so that's plus one for that. I think that's the only modifier. Okay. So just plus one, and the magic number I'm looking for is five or less. And each one gets to try it. So each division can try it that's at fatigue level zero. Robinson attempt first. We'll go for this one first. Yes. Southwest. So here's the roll. And uh, it's, it's a failure, of course. And then Crawford will attempt the same, and they succeed. Like, yeah. our engineering core is better than yours. So, 
there, and we'll rotate it. Okay, so that bridge is complete. All right, let's remove their entrenchments because they were making bridge attempts. So let's see, clear those. Not that's gonna matter. I don't. Yeah, no, that's that's <laughs> right. Yeah, they don't get both. They can either dig in or try to build bridges. So yeah, that, that's exactly right. Thank you. So strategic cycle. First leader recovery segment. We have no sick leaders. So check. That's done. Now, okay. our big fun, the strategic event. I rolled the random event, so why don't you roll the strategic event and tell us what it is. Okay, two dice. It's an eight. We have Mosby's Raiders. Raiders. Uh -oh. okay, that's probably a good thing, maybe, possibly, for me. Uh, yeah, I would think. Right. Uh, reinforcements. Both players determine we have reinforcements on, as prescribed on the turn marker. So we'll open that up. Uh, I'm going to get Ames, and Ames automatically goes into the uh, Bermuda 100, as I recall reading. And then you have your stuff as well. So yeah, it looks like all yours are going to go into the Bermuda 100 as well. Hague it goes into Port Waffle or Petersburg box. Star. What does the star mean? Uh, I'm guessing, oh, uh, Petersburg Confederate player may opt to reroute reinforcements normally sending them to the Burkeville box instead, if you wish. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. So, Haygood's going to go, we're just going to put him in top of Picket. And the next guy is Klingman. Uh, actually, we move Haygood to Port Waffle. And we'll bring... Klingman to pick it. And the BMI cadets go to Staunton. And... No, the BMI cadets go to Lexington. That makes more sense. Unless you go to Staunton. Okay. And Very then, good. Okay. And then mine just goes into the Bermuda 100, so I'll take that. Oh, good grief. <laughs> it just gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> He's he's joined. Uh, he's part of old Gilmore. Okay, so he is part of the tenth corps. Goodness gracious! All right, so that reinforcement section is done. All right, come on back up to the next phase, which is the valley segment. Well, this is going to be very easy because I open that back up and as we can see, I'm passive, so that means I can do nothing, nor do I have any command points. So the valley sits quietly for now. For the Union, we sit quietly, but I believe you have the opportunity. So you may move eligible units into an adjacent off-map box connected by road or railroad. Move all those guys that just arrived, if you wish. Okay. So they get to move one adjacent if it's just by road. thing to do is to move, supply him to Emden and move him up to Thornton. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. So Shenandoah Valley, there is no combat now because we have not occupied the same hex. And then we move on to the Bermuda 100 campaign. Uh, I have no command points and I am passive, so I'm not doing anything. Would you like to move anywhere? And in the Bermuda 100, if you choose not to move, you can entrench instead. Ah! So if you if you wish to, you can place a breastworks complete immediately on the unit. Yeah, I'll have everybody stay put, I guess, yeah. and add entrenchments. Yeah. It just suddenly yeah. got more difficult in the Bermuda 100. <laughs> so breastworks complete. Yeah, cool. they go right up to breastworks complete. And you can never go higher than breastworks complete. Okay. So that's fine. Well, there you go. All those little uh, little guys that just arrived, they're, they're substantial now. So we have no combat in this section. So that's it. So we've completed both of those segments. Depot segment. Well, heck fire. But we have Mosby's Raiders. So what is that? that uh, we have that effect. This result occurs immediately follows this procedure. Total manpower value of all unit Union units in Culpeper County is computed. Uh oh. Okay. And then the Union player takes this total, this total manpower, and subtracts the sum of 
roll of two dice. Ooh. If this resulting number is greater than zero, all Union Railroad Station depots that are on their complete side and can trace them, eh, flip to their build side. Oh, that hurts. Okay, so first, let's see how much manpower I've got. Thanks, Cole Mosby. Pepper. In Culpeper County, so that's the 5th Corps and Kitching uh, and Provisional. So total manpower is, it looks like 66. Okay. 66 is my manpower number. Here's two dice. So I subtract five and it comes down to 61. All right. If the resulting number is greater than zero, well, yeah. <laughs> By a lot. <laughs> By a lot. All <laughs> Union Railroad Station depots that are on their complete side and can trace a hex pack next door are flipped to their build side. Oof. Yikes. It's in build status. Um, that's that's not good. That is not bueno for me at all. So you get no victory points for Mosby's shenanigans. Depots that are affected can be rebuilt normally later in the same strategic cycle. Well, guess what? <laughs> I'm going to uh, build this one back for this turn. So in my supply phase, I have to first do the depot. So I'm going to convert this build back into completed. So in this case, I see why this is important, because if it was already built, I could start building another one. But you can only either start building or repair one. You can't do both. So this precludes me from my plans to build a second one. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. So I, 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 I you, you did the most, because yeah, it says, if this result occurs, which it did, the Union player immediately follows this procedure, right. which we did. We're now back to... To the depot phase. To the depot phase. So the I can either depot. fix Culpepper completely, which I'm going to absolutely need this turn, or I can start building another one. So I'm going to complete the build. You know, we've, we've got the hammers out and we fixed... Yes. Yes. So Culpepper is repaired. Thanks, Mosby. Um, all right. So that, uh, that affected my choice. Would you like to... Uh, do you have any limits on your depots? I have a three depot limit. Okay, so you you could dismantle if you wanted I could start to right dismantle now. one, right. and I could still draw supply from a dismantled depot. Okay, but I don't see why I would do that unless I'm threatening, which I'm not right now. I can't I can't imagine why you would either. But yeah, I mean it's unless you decided you really wanted to, you know, reallocate that somewhere else. But if I start dismantling it now, I can still draw supply from it, correct? Yes, and then it will disappear uh, at the, the next, the next turn. one, right? And I'm moving into. Let me check that county supply. That's a great little county supply map. Okay. Oh, I can't draw supply into Spotsylvania County from Hanover. That's how I put that station in Bumpus. So I'm not going to do anything. Yeah, okay. that's why he's there. He's yeah. there so I can get supply into Spotsylvania. Yep. Okay. So, I think it makes sense for him to stay. I don't see any point to do anything with the Ashland. Certainly don't want to dismantle the Richmond Depot. So, yeah, I, I'm not going to do anything there. So, that's it for my depot. Phase. Okay. So, now we draw supplies. And uh, what we will do is check. So, the Union will check first. And per that wonderful supply map that we just referenced, we can see that I have one in Culpeper County. And that means I could draw supplies in Culpeper Orange, and Spotsylvania. So any and all units in those three counties, due to reciprocity to Culpeper and adjacency, should be in supply. So starting from Kitching, obviously, uh, Fifth Corps is in supply. Burnside and the Ninth in this little segment mm -hmm. of Orange are okay. Yeah, everybody, all the cavalry is okay. And of course, Spotsylvania is okay. So I believe I am completely in supply, with the exception of... I think yeah. Sheridan, might Sheridan is of out of supply, yeah, because he's in Caroline, and I don't have, which was the whole point of him going down there. So, uh, him and Greg are now out of supply. Supply, out of supply. Okay, so we get a little tick mark up there in the upper left-hand corner to show that they are currently out of supply, which means if they are still out of supply in the next strategic cycle, but I, I can forage here, 
So we'll, we'll make an attempt on foraging up. Well, they want to try to get back into supply somehow uh, before, before the, the next, next one. Season. Right. Okay. Or be in a county with supply, in which case they will revert. Right. Okay. So do you have anyone that is out of supply? I think the only, I think everybody is okay because of where my depots are. The only guy I think who's out of supply is the first North Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I believe we've taken care of all of that wonderful supply stuff, so we move on to my Union Command segment, which, if I'm reading this correctly, I will roll once for each the Valley and the Bermuda 100. This is where I will potentially earn some command points for next time, so I have to have at least one point in order to get out of passive mode. Uh, I can save them up. Uh, or I can expend them for those operations that you get to do for free, apparently. So let's, uh, let me roll the strategic on each of these. So command points. Um, I don't get any modifiers for this. If I was occupying Drury's Bluff, I'd get a little bit more opportunity, potentially, for command. So I'm going to roll. So that's a one with Seagull. <laughs> and a three with Butler. Uh, so if it's less than or equal to, then I get a command point for those. So let's start with Seagull. Let's see if I have that ability to roll ones like I do all the time. Here we go. No, of course not. And Butler, I need a one, two, or three. Hey, Butler uh, gets a command point, and they move up. So we will flip that and go to active. And that gives me the opportunity to do things before the next, or at the top of the next command cycle. All right. So, hooray. Come on, Butler. Uh, so if you have two command points, you could do two actions? Is that the idea? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, i got to read that. I just, this, I've just had a hard time grasping off-map stuff. So the command segment is done. Victory points? There are no victory points because I have not captured anything that is worth anything. Spotsylvania is mine, county control, but uh, I didn't I didn't get anything for it. Haven't destroyed any depots, and no battles have been won, so nothing there. And it's not at least May 31st, so we don't have to check to see if there's an end of game. So now, with all of that strategic cycle done, we can advance the turn marker. Hi, Battle Cat to turn four. So let's cut it here, and we'll roll the random event and see what's in store for us for next time, and then that will let people chew on this strategic turn for for a week, and then we'll we'll just pick it up fresh. What do you say? I think that's a good idea. I, I think, think that's so an too. excellent idea. Okay, so I'm going, let's see, I rolled the, you did the strategic, so I'll roll the random event for uh, now turn five. So here's a random event. Let's open that up. It is Moraine. Hooray. Moraine current <laughs> plus one with a star. And it's not no effect. So, yeah. so we're going to have more Moraine. All right. So, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. I hear the, I hear the <laughs> sadness in your voice. The first, well, the first North Carolina is like, well, hell. <laughs> yeah. Boys, we're not getting home. Uh, so, and then we'll uh, do this one, clone, and then we'll move these out. So this is going to go out to here, and that's going to go out to there. Wow. Okay, more slogs. I didn't realize it rained this much in the, well, I guess in the summer, sure. I, you know, the whole, that tide whole water. Harbor, or Spotsylvania battle was, uh, rained a lot. I think it rained in the wilderness. And you'll notice on this one, folks, that uh, I have not, I've been desperately looking for that note that, hey, there can only be a maximum of X number of rain turns in this campaign. I have not found it yet. So if you know it's in there somewhere, point it out to me. But I don't think that there's any kind I of limitation. Remember. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there is either, other than the uh, things get converted to no effect once we get into June. Right, right. Which I guess is their way of controlling it to some yeah. extent. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, well, then uh, yeah, we'll take we'll take a heavy breather, <sighs> and uh, oh, you're building that bridge was good for you. At, very good. At, uh, yeah. at Rapidan Station, and, and something I probably should have done before I moved Long Street is burn the fatigue to destroy Orange Courthouse, because you can now use that as a supply route. Right. So I should have damaged. Uh, not that you can't repair. You do have the. Op- Where do you get a chance to repair? I seem to remember that was. Um, so, that, so, so that's one of the in the depot. You can either uh, you can try to build, or you can try to repair up to three, oh, okay. three stations. So yeah, okay. it's a nice little um, option tree that you have there for doing that stuff. It's like, hey, I've, I'm set for supplies depots, so let's burn this. But uh, well, let's let's move right into our discussion for the afternoon. Um, thoughts? How do you feel about this session with all of the? The wonderful details. I'm getting to see the pattern of how it all fits together in terms of the strategic cycle, not having gone through it. I think going back to our first session, and I thought this as I was reading more, and you know, people would say, why don't you read the rules before you start to play? I probably should have been damaging and destroying railroad stations. Crazy. They, they kind of make your supply harder as we get into the game. I, I did not get anywhere close to getting done what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to be in a much better position. I mean, you now have, well, thankfully it's raining again. So you'll be a little slower heading south. I was hoping to be in a better position to, to intercept, but I'm still behind, I feel. You, you've clearly gotten past the wilderness, and, and now it's going to be, I'm not sure where to draw the next line, actually. I, I'm going to have to study the map and, and think about that. I think you and I have both, uh, in all of our playthroughs over the years, I think we are now, especially in campaign mode, adhering to that doctrine of do no harm. Uh, I, I think your one little lashing out attack there with the first North Carolina, neither one of us are digging holes. I, I'm trying to adapt to the events that, as they come my way, and that's fine. Uh, it's sad that leaving the wilderness, I'm leaving a lot of these wonderful plank roads. And, and pikes. So now I'm truly out marching through the muddy roads across the, the countryside. So that's going to probably alter my plans a little bit. But I really appreciate the fact that I've gotten through the wilderness for the most part and I've got a couple of lines. And now I think you and I are going to be doing some shadow boxing back and forth uh, somewhere throughout Spotsylvania County as we move south. Um, so the fact that I can keep it to the west of the Mattaponi makes me happy. You yeah. Uh, I, I've got a pretty good line, defensive line here, and an intercept line set up. So if you try to get down here to block these bridges, hopefully I can react to it first in the rain. Yeah. Yeah, I was hoping to get further. Ewell didn't get nearly as far as I was hoping, and then I decided to keep AP Hill core back i mean they would have had one more activation but i didn't like leaving these little subs behind so i can get that consolidated i just look at the road network and you think you got plenty of roads but it's like invariably you end up seeing you got to backtrack somewhere oh yeah there are lots of little roads to nowhere or yeah. r- the wrong way <laughs> yeah they, they the roads curve it's like driving around knoxville yeah <laughs> <laughs> you head north, and before you know it, you're heading south. Yep. Like, How did that happen? I think my big three union priorities for this turn, and I and I met them all. Uh, one was establish a, uh, an anchor at Spotsylvania. Two, set up a defensive line uh, so that these units here could rest because I kept them at. I wanted yeah. to make sure they got there with fatigue level one with with a screen of some kind that would prevent you from coming and taking advantage of that. So I was pleased about that. They have fully recovered. And uh, and then I had this up here. I was just keeping an eye on the wilderness in case you decide to get really sneaky with AP Hill in the third core. And just, I I saw it. I saw you thinking about it. (laughs) Yeah, I was thinking about it, but it was like, I could see getting in. I just wasn't seeing a way to get out. (laughs) Exactly. I was like, come get some because I'm going to close that trap. (laughs) So I was trying to bait yeah. you a little bit, but you didn't you didn't take it. So that was a very smart choice. And yeah, your bigger picture is get south and establish yeah. a bulwark to keep me out of bumpus, you know, turnout and all that. Yeah, that that's 
you know, you don't start getting victory point locations. I don't even think you get Orange County. I don't even think is a victory nope, point. Nope, it's not worth anything. So yeah, I don't so, get anything I mean, until than, this next yeah, line yeah. of counties. Yep. Yeah. So it's really for me the North Anna. I want to try to delay you, and the rain is helping delay you. So that's good. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just kicking myself for not destroying, not understanding how important it was to have destroyed or damaged. Using Fitz Lee to damage Hamilton's Crossing, Fredericksburg. I, I was station. wondering if you were going to pick up on why I was, you know, just getting Sheridan, just try to just push broom you out mm. of out of here. And, uh, you know, I was like, well, if I could trap him, great. If I can attack him, even better. But then you realize, okay, get him out of there. But I was very much trying to take advantage of the, the Fredericksburg uh, as a a real, I, I didn't like it, you know, as a, as a supply in Spotsylvania. But if I could have i might have um but then you getting down to guinea station was really like oh that was the one i wanted but <laughs> yeah. then but then yeah. mosby had other plans anyway so there you go yeah that that yeah that random event was useful very useful yeah for me but this has been great you know even though we only got one turn if we have this ebb and flow each and every session where we have a lot of stuff and and coming back to what we always tell you new players out there it it's not about the battles. It's about the maneuver. And what we're abstracting and simulating is when I surround Fitz Lee with Sheridan, there's lots of little skirmishing, I'm sure, but there was no big pitched battle. It was just, it's action and reaction, right? And so, and so it doesn't necessarily mean you have to roll dice to have a battle. And, uh, and for me, uh, with all those negatives, you could see, I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to get to a negative one attack. It just didn't do anything for me. So do no harm. It's all about moving and establishing lines and getting past this rain, which is going to bedouble me throughout this entire campaign. So, Yeah, I've already, you know, two sessions, and I've already feel like I would com- play this completely different if we started over. Well, not completely different. Like you said, I- I'm not wanting to fight a battle. You're, and you're not unless you gave me a great opportunity. And that is that's exactly that's my doctrine of do no harm. Don't leave somebody out there in the wind where you know the sharks come circling and then boom, you you, you get me. So if I can keep the defensive lines going and and have a very broad front, then you know avoiding any kind of sneaky flank marches and stuff like that. But you're you're at the mercy of the initiatives, of course. So. Yeah. Save this before I forget. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, well then, folks, thank you for being here today for session two, and we look forward to seeing you back here. And more than anything, we want to hear your comments. And for those corrections, all of you out there in that wonderful core of uh, sticklers that keep us on the right track with the rules, thank you very much for this. We really appreciate it. There, are, uh, yeah, some of you that I can you. count on, and of course Holger, we love your very detailed suggestions of how we you would have played it a little differently in the first couple. And that's what we recommend to you is. Don't tell us what you think we should do for the future, but certainly comment on everything that occurred in this one session, if you wish, or everything up to this point. Everybody, we will see you next time. Please take a moment, click that like and subscribe as I ask you each and every week, ad nauseum, ad infinitum. Click that notification bell and you'll hear when I drop these, which is usually Monday or Tuesday, depending on how quickly I can get them edited. And I'm also showing you we have a couple of new supporters this week, so thank you very much to those of you who have been added to the list. You've been very generous with your donations, but please do not feel obligated to. Obviously, you're finding something that is uh, meaningful to you in the playthrough of all of this and that support is much appreciated. So thank you again to all of you. And Roger, man, think hard. Think about what you're going to do. Can't rely on Mosby <laughs> forever. Yes, I can. Yes, you can. He's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll see you next week, man. Okay, bye-bye.